Hi everyone, my name's Alex and welcome back to another video and this is another video about medical school and specifically how to do PBL. So PBL is problem based learning and more and more universities are starting to adopt this style of learning and it's proven to be uh, really beneficial. The overall idea of PBL is that you start off with a problem or clinical scenario um, and you then have to answer a question or learning objective based around this and then you have to teach what you've learnt and what you've researched to answer the learning objective to the rest of your group. Obviously it will vary quite significantly um, depending on what university you're at but yeah this is just sort of a general overview from the perspective of a UEA student. Obviously it's going to vary as well um, because of Covid so um, it might be online, you might actually get to do it in person um, it might be via Zoom, it really will vary. So this is just a bit of an overall guide. So the first step in PBL is the clinical scenario. Um, you'll be given a clinical scenario written by your medical school and it will be accompanied by questions um, or learning objectives which fit around the clinical scenario um, for each person to answer. So you'll start off by going through the clinical scenario as a group and trying to understand what's going on, uh, sort of brainstorming any ideas that you current, currently have about what's going on before the teaching is delivered and writing down anything you don't know or want answering or want clarifying. So there might be a um, disease which you've never heard of, uh, there might be words you don't understand or drugs you've never heard of or it might be like interpreting some test results that you want to find out more about. So once you've got all of the um, questions and things that your group need to find out and once you've got the questions that your medical school have set you, you need to uh, divide them up between you. In this first step as well it's a good opportunity to sort of work through your clinical reasoning as well. Uh, obviously it will depend on um, the cases and how they're written but Often it will go from the first presentation of a condition through to seeing the GP or secondary care. Uh, so you can try to work out what's going on using your current knowledge right from the start. So right from that first presentation you can try and work it out um, all the way through to the end. And if you get things wrong it doesn't matter because obviously you've not been taught any of the content yet. So you'll be able to go through that in the following week. So the second step is researching. So once you've been assigned your learning objective or questions that you've got to answer, you need to go away and research them. So you can use a variety of different sources for this. So at most universities, what you need to know will be covered in the lectures. So it's a good idea to start with the lectures um, and make sure that what you're doing doesn't contradict the lectures but don't just base your research off the lectures because obviously your whole group's going to go to them. So when you come back to teach them later on, no one's going to have gained anything from it. Yeah, lectures are a good place to start and a good sort of guide, but I always start off with a Google search. So just Googling it just to get a general gist of what's going on, just so you understand the overall picture. And then once you've done that, you can find some good sources. So the NHS uh, website is always a good start. Um, that will give you a sort of overview from a patient's perspective. And then there's lots of different websites of giving information from a doctor's perspective. So the internet's good. Um, YouTube videos are particularly good if you don't understand something. I use them quite a lot in the end, but um, it's difficult to reference YouTube videos. So if you can use it to get the overall understanding and then find more information elsewhere, then that's always good. Academic journals um, can be good, but it can be difficult to sift through all the information on there, especially at the start. The textbooks are also another good option for research. Um, so these can be quite good for getting any extra little bits of information. But yeah, all the researching is up to you as to where you get your information from. But this is the crucial thing. You must remember to reference everything properly. So use either Harvard or Vancouver for, um, for medical school. Other different schools use various different referencing uh, referencing methods but Harvard or Vancouver you can't go wrong in medical school. In order to reference it's a good idea to use a reference manager so the most simple form of these is a website called Cite This For Me which is just a website so you can like copy and paste um, a website link into Cite This For Me and it will generate a reference uh, or you can just search for various academic journals 
and it will automatically create the reference for you and create your bibliography, which you can then just copy and paste at the end of your Word document. And then slightly more integrated reference managers are things like Mendeley. Uh, so this is a Word plugin and also a Chrome plugin, I think. And you can just click on the Chrome plugin to upload it to your Mendeley. Then when you uh, want to cite it in a Word document, you'll just click on the Mendeley um, button at the top and you'll be able to insert that reference and it will create the bibliography at the end for you. Um, it can be really good. Um, it can be a bit buggy sometimes, but it's definitely worth a go. Um, I've, I've used it quite a lot and found it really useful. So once you've done your research, you need to um, compile what you've learnt and what you've researched into a document that other people can learn from. So using colours is a good idea, setting things out with good headings is really important, um, explaining things in uh, an easy to understand way and making things concise as well because the people in your group aren't going to be wanting to read pages and pages and pages of your notes they're going to want to see simple explanations and they want it to be concise as well. So trying to stick to no more than really two A4 sides, only go over if you have to, if it's a really big topic, but two A4 sides is often a good guide. So for me, I quite like to include a load of questions at the bottom of my, um, of my work. So the rest of my group could use those questions as part of their learning. So yeah, that's the uh, researching and the write-up bit. And the last bit, is presenting. So in the following week's PBL session, um, what you'll need to do is present your research to the rest of your group. And it's often a good idea to do this um, with reference to the case from the previous week. So relating what you've researched back to the case is something which a lot of people find really helps and it really adds to that sort of problem solving which PBL is really, really good for. With the UBA, we saw the same characters appear in each case week after week. So by relating things back to the case, we could relate the learning with a character and different point throughout the year, which was really useful to learn from. So your presentation can take any form. It can be a PowerPoint presentation in its most simple terms. You can just talk it through if you really want to. Asking your group questions is something which I really like to do. So um, I'd have a little quiz. Um, some people did cahoots, which were great. Um, there were loads of really inventive games uh, which taught the rest of the group um, the content that they've been researching throughout the week. Um, this is also a really good chance for the rest of your group to ask you questions uh, about what you've been researching. So perhaps if they don't quite understand something, because you've done more research into it, um, you well, you might perhaps be able to answer their questions for them. One of the reasons I really like PBL is because um, everyone does their own thing and learning from other people um, and having things explained by uh, people your own age and in the same situation as you um, is often a much better way of learning things and having things explained by lecturers. It also means that uh, you actually have to really engage with the content on your syllabus rather than just sit there in a lecture and just let the lecturer's words fly over your head. So yeah, that's how to do PBL. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.